hi guys welcome back to my channel as usual it is my pleasure that you decided to stop in you decided to join remember subscribe share like tell a friend to tell a friend that uh, you know Jason has a channel and she talks about some good stuff All right <laughs> Today, I, I, I struggled. I struggled to make this video. I've been thinking about it uh, for a while. It was a, it was a challenge to make. Some persons will get offended. Uh, but it, it, I just needed to do it. Over the past few weeks, we've been bombarded by so many news stories of... I'll just... For the purpose of this. Call, call him His Excellency. Uh, we've been, and in Christendom, I think we've gotten, uh, it's a blow. There are some naysayers, there are some, some things that persons who, who have always been doubtful will come out of the woodwork and, and become more vocal about it. And there, there are lots of questions that, that become, become now more relevant. And so I decided... I decided to talk to share this afternoon what I would what I want to talk about this afternoon is there are some there are some persons from different spheres who who would say oh these people are so stupid how could they um, and sometimes when you hear the stories and as the stories unfold um, to be honest, I got a bit dumbfounded by some of them. It, it is almost surreal. If, if you have seen my, um, some of my posts, you will see when I said Jamaica is not a real place. Because some of the, the things that, that are unfolding, it's almost like a lifetime movie. It's, all, it's almost like a movie. The angle I'm going from this afternoon is... I just have two points. I have two points to make. The two points might morph into several other things, but I really have two points to make. This story, it, it, it is it is sensational. But I want us as persons who are who, who are in Christendom, persons who are Christians. I am not trying to denounce my faith or to distance myself from Christianity. Two things. The first thing is you have a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a choice. And I, and I point this out because some of the, the I have heard, I've been in circles and I've been around persons and persons who are Christians and persons who operate and function in, in some situations where it may, not, it may not get as sensational as His Excellency's case. But there are some clear indicators that there are things that are contrary to what the Bible says. There are things that are contrary to what God expects of Christians. And the first thing I'm going to say to us, I'm going to say to you, I'm going to say to everybody who is watching, you have a choice. And the eve, when we start, let us go as far back as in the Garden of Eden, when the, the first inhabitants were placed there, and God said, everything is here. Eat of everything except the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. No, they were there. Free will has always been given to man. Free will has always been given to man. And that has not been revoked. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are in an environment and your free will your free will, it seems as if your free will is being revoked. That is not the environment for you. No, it, it seems some of the things that people that is, is done, that were done, and some of the, the ways, some people are saying a spell or whatever. But it seems silly, but I can understand why some persons would feel compelled to do some of the things some of them they're very outlandish but i can understand no all everything i express here is my personal is my personal opinion 
And a lot of it is just based on my research in terms of going around and the circles which I'm moving. A lot of persons, the level of power, the level of homage that they give to these pastors, it is almost unbelievable. Yes, I said it, and I don't regret saying it. There is a big difference between respect and appreciation than downright lordship. No. When certain things are presented to you as if you do not have a choice, Jesus said, two roads before you, pick your choice. He said, yeah, man, I think the best route for, route for you to choose is life. But the options are there. So when you, if you find yourself in an environment and it's almost as if you don't have a choice, whatever you are doing, it is up to the man of God or it's up to the woman of God to dictate the direction of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, Houston, we have a problem. Shepherds give guidance. Leaders give guidance. And where, where does the guidance come from? No, this is for dramatic effect. I bring up this book, my big Bible. Where do these leaders get guidance from? The Bible. No, they are leaders, lead you into onto a path. They are there to guide you. Yes, all of that. But they are not there to dictate your life. You have a choice in the matter. And when it, it if it comes to the point where everything that you do, they have to give the go ahead for you to do it. Whether you marry who you marry, when is the date of the, the, the wedding, what career path you take, if you, if you should migrate or if you should leave the community that you're in. Now, when I say these, the, these things might, might sound like, really, pastors doing it? Yes. These are not just things that I'm picking out or pulling from my heart. These are things that I've heard happen in Christendom. Leaders are there to guide. And the guidance and the direction should be to the word of God. Now, if you are, if you as a leader, as a pastor, whatever you call them, because I will get into all of the names. That's, that's a whole separate issue. Your duty is to guide and lead persons to the Bible. Because this is the standard that as Christians we live by. That is your sole duty. To lead persons to the word. Both the living word, which is Jesus Christ, and the written word. That is your sole responsibility. People are adults. People have choice in the decisions that... Do you realize, and they, they will tell you also, that they cannot give an account. When the role is called up yonder, no minister can give an account for your sins, for your iniquity. So if they cannot give an account for your sins, if they cannot stand and say, okay, this is the reason why she did it. Why should they have so much lordship over your life and dictatorship over your life? Don't don't be fooled, people. Leaders are there to guide you on a biblical path. They are not dictate, there to dictate to you which so social circle you should move in, what you should cook at your house, how much time you should spend with your family. They are, that is not their responsibility. If they guide you to the, the, the truth of the Bible, then the Bible dictates to you, shows you, should be able to show you when you are sleeping, what you are doing wrong. No minister should take away your right to decide the direction, the path in which your life is going to go. And, and God forbid, you as an adult have to take responsibility, especially when you have children. You are the person who is in charge of your child, of your household. And you are the person who is responsible for what they, they indulge in and what they are exposed to. So, no minister should guilt you into giving. If they have to guilt you into giving, it means that you have, you have not read and understood what is in the Bible and what the Bible says about giving and about tithing. No minister should guilt you into thinking that all your time belongs to the church or to the ministry. No minister should do that. When you read and when you, when you get into the word of God, you will see and the spirit directs you what to do, where to go and all of that. The second thing is everyone has free access to God. 
you go to God through Jesus Christ. Now, there, there, there are some ministers who want to present themselves as the channel through which persons can go to God. So, persons, you have persons who replace the word of God. And they're, they're, they're so intent and they're so excited about getting a word from, from the prophet. Getting a word from the prophetess. Getting a word from the apostle or the man of God or the woman of God. As if the word that you get from these people supersedes this word. I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen. There is no word from any prophet or prophetess or apostle or bishop or bishop doctor that supersedes what is in the word of God. It's almost as if, I mean, nothing can happen if you don't get a word from them. Some people, it's almost like they're the, they're, they're the direct link to God. There's open vision. When Jesus died on the cross and he rose again, he replaced the need for these middlemen, for these mediators, for, for, for the priest who would go in and offer sacrifice on our behalf. Jesus replaced that. He was the ultimate sacrifice. So when persons put these people in these positions of preeminence, and let me get on to the titles now. These, these, these titles, and I don't have any problem when people study their, their theology and they get the doctorate and the bishop. We're not, we're not going against, we're not saying anything is wrong with your bishop, doctor, or your prophetess, or your apostle, or whatever name you want to call yourself. But when the names take on so much importance, and, and, and it's almost as, as it's a way to laud you and to applaud you and to put you up on this high place, we have to be careful. God will not share his glory with any man. There's a name that is given that is above every other name. And it's the name of Jesus. So when sometimes, when, 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 when persons, their, their titles, they're so hollowed. I have to make sure you get the titles right. Let us be careful. Let us be careful. And these are some of the signs. These are some of the red flags. When we see we're getting in a situation that we should not be getting into. It may not get out of hand like the excellent case. But let us be careful. There is no human being. There is no pastor. There is no apostle. There is no bishop. That is a direct link to God. That has a link. A, a bigger link to God than you have. There is no bishop. There is no apostle. That is greater in the kingdom than you. That is better than you. So sometimes we set up these people. It's almost as if they are better than us. And if, especially if they come and they are well spoken. And if they, they are operating on a, with a certain level of anointing and with, with certain gifts. God has given different persons gifts. Some are prophets, some are apostles, some are teachers, some are preachers. Yes. So these people, because they operate in a certain gift, area of giftedness and a certain area of leadership, does not make them any better than you, ladies and gentlemen. No minister, no apostle, no bishop is better than you. The Lord still speaks to individuals. The Lord still directs you and he still directs me. And the Lord still wants relationship from you and from me so that we can listen to his voice. That is what he wants. Is the environment that we're in. Is there so much focus and so much highlight and so much spotlight on this one person? Whatever their title is. Is the environment that we're in. If you go into a church and for every second speak, every second... Every speaker that goes up, we're not talking about when you're saying greetings and acknowledge them. Their whole testimony is about, oh, prophetess, I remember when, when prophet, I remember when the woman of God, I remember the man of God, they said this to me and that, and every single person comes up and they, 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 they hold focus for almost every service. The, the two or three persons they go up to speak, they have to be lauding this person, this leader or whatever. Houston, there is a problem. Let us be aware. Let us be aware. There's only one God. There's only one Lord. And the root to him is through Jesus Christ. So if we have these people and they're there, they're, we begin them up. Them high and they're lifted up. Mm -mm. Let us be careful. And I, 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 I say it with, without any reservation. If I any day I get into an environment that becomes about my pastor, or about my associate pastor. When, when, when it becomes all about them, that is the day that I take my leave from that environment, from that church. Because if the church, if 
your leader is not pointing you to God and encouraging you to get that word. It's that word that they always have. Get that word for yourself from the scripture. Then there is a problem. So ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you. Let us not be fooled. A lot of these people, they start off with good intentions. They are good, saved, and sanctified people. But when, when pride gets into the way, and when they realize that the amount of power that they can wield over other people, yes, they get carried away. He can speak to you like he speaks to the pastor. And finally, woe be unto you who are shepherds who are leading God's sheep astray. Woe Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, share, like, comment. Please comment.